Hello, so good day everyone. So welcome again to our next module, which is the International Communication and Globalization. So this module is also categorized into three parts. So for this part, I will be introducing to you what is globalization is and what is international communication. And as you go through with our lecture, I will be discussing to you the relationship of international communication and globalization as well as its importance in terms of how we can interact with other people around the globe. So for this discussion, let me begin this by discussing to you of what is a globalization. So when we talk of globalization, it is a process of interaction and integration among the people, companies, and governments of different nations, a process driven by international trade and investment and aided by information technology. So actually globalization is a very diverse term. It's a very diverse um, concept. It is always pertaining to from a global perspective. Let's say for example, in terms of business, we do have the business processing outsource or the BPO. And uh, we all know that the Philippines is, <coughs> excuse me, is one of the known BPO companies around the globe. So most of the time, the BPO industries in our country is, keep, is catering other companies around the globe. Let's say for example, through a call center agent or through a call center company, they are into considering the demand power of the Filipinos, wherein most of their clients are actually coming from different parts of the globe. So that is an example of, of globalization in terms of business industry. And also when we talk of globalization, to make it more specific to your part, is that when someone is investing in our country, let's say they come from a different uh, uh, country and they, they, are, they are investing in our country and uh, the, the businesses that they are into is also still an, an implication of globalization. When, we, when our, um, our government is transacting to other nations, let's say through a uh, tripartite agreement with other country, that, or other agreement with other country, it's still an implication of globalization. For as long as there is an, for as long as there is an international trade and investment that is aided by information technology, just like that, basically the business processing outsource, it is an implication of what a globalization is. So, one thing that we really need to to just stick in our mind, mind when we are talking about globalization is just think of the word global. And of course, think of information technology, how information technology connect us, interrelate us when we're doing business or when we're doing international trade. And uh, with that, it will be easier for you to understand what is the concept of, of globalization. So it means the interdependence of various societal aspects in a universal setting. Another thing is when we talk of globalization, it is pertaining to the, it is the increasing economic, political, and cultural integration and interdependence of diverse culture. Just like what I mentioned to you that when we talk of globalization, think global, think of how other countries are interrelating to us for the purpose of international relation, specifically on international trade. And when doing such thing, it is always associated with political and, and cultural. So economic, political, and cultural are all integrating with one another. It's like when our country, when our government, which is something to do with politics, when our government is closing a deal with, with other countries, and for us to invite more investors in our country, then that is globalization. When we are after with being more considerate on how we are going to interrelate ourselves with them through being more cultural sensitive, that is when cultural integration and interdependence come into 
um, existence. Another thing is that think it this way, it concerns not only a nation, but the entire world. And of course, with the, with the integration of information technology, which is playing a very important role in order for us to realize or to materialize the main purpose or the main objective of globalization. So next is, since we are talking of uh, global here, Our challenge is on how to be global for us to cope with the rest of the world. So that's a challenge in every nation on how to be global in order for them to really um, invite more international trades, in order for them to invite more investors. So there's really a need for us to think global. And we should not just stick on our own country and doing this thing. Although we, although we can materialize or we can uh, um, utilize what we have in our country, but in order for us to really support more of the needs of the people in a particular country. And then there's a need for us to think global. We should not like, just settle on what we can do in our country. And... Uh, <laughs> If we are not after with these challenges, we will remain constant. There will never be growth. Jinx a while ago that if we will be just settling on what we have in our country, then we will remain constant. If we are if we are after with growth, then we have to expand. We have to, to think global. We have to think of what we can do in order for us to really create more development. So that is what our government is doing. They're tying up with, with European nations. They're tying up with our neighboring countries like, like China, Japan, and Korea. That, that is the way of our government in order for us to really have, to really achieve growth or development in our country. What our government is doing right now when they are into international trading is already a manifestation of what is a uh, 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 globalization is. So, for example, this is what I mentioned to you a while ago. Just, I'm just going to give this one. For example, if the Philippines will remain focusing its efforts on what it has and will not seek support from other international organizations, do you think the Philippines will be able to survive economically speaking? So. Culturally, yes, of course, we can survive, culturally speaking, but economically, no. We need foreign investors to circulate our economy. That is when globalization comes in. So how do you think people become interconnected? So we were saying a while ago that in globalization, we need the information technology. So do you think it is sufficient enough for us to be interconnected despite being distant from you. That's the magic of uh, information technology. And one of which is, of course, is the invention of internet. And internet plays a huge part in terms of interconnecting with one another. By just one click, you can go to different places. By just one click, you can search different things. By just one click, you can connect with other people around the globe. Globalization is a wide topic. It comes across various social aspects from cultural to economical. But in this lecture, we shall be looking at globalization in relation to communication. The interconnectedness of the people through internet can be best understood through the concept of what we call the global village. What is the concept of a global village? The late Marshall McLuhan, a media and communication theorist, coined the term global village in 1964 to describe the phenomenon of the world's culture shrinking and expanding at the same time due to the pervasive technological advances that allow for instantaneous sharing of culture. Global village refers to how one world are interconnected by an electronic nervous system or what we call the media. 
McLuhan explained that time and space are being reduced with the help of the new means of information communication technology. There's also a need to point out that during the time when Marshall McLuhan conceived the concept of global village, there's no internet yet. What we have is only television, radio, and uh, telephone. And based only on those existing information communication technology at the time, he is still able to assume that time will come that all of us will be interconnected with one communication technology. And it is happening right now because of the invention of the, the internet. There is a need for us to think though no, that when we talk of globalization, once again, it is a process that influences and also influenced by many aspects of contemporary life, including the economy, international relations, society, politics, and religion. And communication is also an integral part of this globalization processes. And fortunately, even less is known about the role of communication and communication theory in globalization. Another thing that we have to give it more emphasis on this discussion is that connecting with people on the other side of the world is now much easier than it was a few years ago. Satellites, the fiber optics, cables, and the internet make it effortless to share information with those in different time zones and locations. Global communication is directly affected by the process of uh, globalization and uh, it helps to increase business opportunities, remove cultural barriers, and uh, develop a, the so-called global village. Both globalization and uh, global communication have changed the environmental, cultural, political, and economic elements of the world. For instance, many companies today hire employees that are located in other countries just like the BPO industry in the Philippines. Using communication vehicles just like video calling make it simple to converse with colleagues across the globe, almost making it feel as if they are in the same room. Now that we are experiencing COVID pandemic, video calling is become more apparent and become more usable in order for us to deliver information to others, in order for us to connect with others, and even during the online classes. And we have to thank um, global communication on that aspect because information itself can be transferred as a valuable business assets from one country to another. This has the effect of making everyone's operations more modern and efficient regardless where they are located. Affected both by globalization and global communication, the global village once again is created when distance and isolation no longer matter because we are all connected by the technology. Widespread telephone and internet access have been life-changing for many people across the world, especially those in developing countries. Hence, we can say that globalization and global communication have made it easier to see people on the other side of the world as a neighbor instead of a stranger from a far away, far away land. There, there is so much knowledge about other countries and cultures available online that it's no longer a complete mystery to all of us. So with, with all those things that I discussed and mentioned to you a while ago, we can say that globalization of communication implies the freedom of movement of ideas information, images, and reports. In this regard, many examples can be given, such as the movement of religions and the broadcasting of uh, scientific knowledge. Now, let's talk about international communication. When we talk of uh, international communication, Walter suggests that communication and symbolic processes play an even more important role. He observed that these dynamics of globalization is also observed across nations. In international communication, we thought of how economy, politics, and culture interplay. In consideration to these three, we need to think of the importance of international relationship through proper communication. And with that, global or 
International communication refers to the development and sharing of information through verbal and nonverbal messages in international settings and context. It is a broad field that incorporates multiple disciplines of communication that even includes the intercultural, political, health, media, crisis, social advocacy, and integrated marketing communications, to name just a few. And uh, those, um, the study of uh, global communication examines how information is exchanged across geographical and social divides as well as how communication both impacts and is influenced by culture, politics, media, etc. Its strategies and practices allow marketers and creative directors, the public relations specialists, political consultants, the market researchers, just like in your case, um, to develop and share messages that reach audiences across borders, uh, whether to resonate politically, help selling a products, or ex expose illegal labor practices. Global communication can take various forms, including global advertisements, political speeches, journalistic news stories, books, traditional print publication, and a lot more. Based on these things that I mentioned to you, so you have to remember that in the talk of globalization, international communication, um, the economy is comprised primarily of material exchanges. The political consists of exchanges of power, authority, and legitimacy. Culture is formed largely out of symbolic exchanges, and all these things are aspects that have to be taken into account in international communication because these are the things that we are communicating to other nations. We communicate economy, we communicate politics, we communicate culture towards them. And in order for us to meet half faith, to have a good relationship internationally speaking, communication plays a very important role. The Philippines, for instance, remain its good relationship with the rest of Asian nations because of the respect for shared culture and economical pact through their shared resources. More so, the country is wary of its image in the global economy and other nationalities for it will help the country to boost its economies. If we have a very bad track record internationally, it will affect our international relationship with others, especially during the time that we are now experiencing an economic crisis. The act of showing the good image of the country is a form of communication. We show to the world what the country has and what it can offer. Another example is when the president went abroad as representative of the country, it's also a form of communication. It suggests the kind gesture of the country to other nations. Finally, when the country sent relief support to other nations during the time of calamities, it's another form of communication. The country is sending a message to the entire world that despite the diversity of culture and political belief, it is also a way of showing the helping hands of our country to other nations.